Hello, my name is Ryan, and we're talking about time management over the next few sessions. In episode one, now we will get into the need and the principle of time management. So we'll handle both of those together. In episode two, we'll look at the time of time management. And in episode three, um, we'll end by looking at some tools of time management. So let's begin here with talking about the need for time management. What time is it? You wake up in the morning, you're asking that. Is it time for breakfast or family chores? Uh, what time do I need to be at the taxi rank or at my desk? Uh, what time is the first lecture or meeting? Uh, what time is lunch? Uh, is there time? Is there lunch? <laughs> Afternoon responsibilities, uh, time to make dinner, social engagements, uh, sleep and bedtime. See, us wondering about or working out what the time is intersects with a, with a whole bunch of other questions like, what are we meant to be doing at the moment? Even if the answer is nothing at all. Uh, where are we meant to be? Even if that's become a lot more online at the moment. And who? Who are we meant to focus on or be with, etc.? What's my point? My point is time is a huge part of our lives. Now, one of the questions we want to be asking is how is our management of that time going? And my opinion is that we, we all struggle with managing our time in some way. Um, I've invested uh, considerably in, in managing and developing systems of time management, and it's still something that I have to work on. And can I say as gently as possible that we've come across very few students who actually seem to manage their time well at university. Instead, our normal experience as a ministry to university students is that most students do poorly at time management. And it shows. Many students, on the one hand, seem to float around university in some kind of a haze. They're not really sure what they're meant to be doing or where or with who. And so there's no real intention or, or purpose. It all seems a little aimless. And then that usually leads to, on the other hand, uh, frequently seeing students stressed out and running around like chickens with their, with their heads cut off. And that's often around, obviously, test and assignment and exam time. Do we really want any of that to be us and our normal experience at university? Uh, one of the other things that we, we often see as well is students unpredictable in responsibilities and unreliable in relationships. And so what, what do I mean there? Well, with responsibilities, um, let's say an assignment is due or a tutorial is meant to be on that they're meant to be present at and the assignment doesn't get handed in, the tutorial doesn't get attended, um, you know, there's a missing of deadlines and meetings, or even with responsibilities, uh, sorry, with relationships. Um, you say you'll be somewhere or do something with someone, um, but then you bail at the last minute or simply don't pitch. And, and we get a lot of that with the work that we do. Think about that for a moment. Does, does any of that describe you? Does any of that uh, sound familiar? I think a lot of that comes down to a lack of time management. And so there is this need for time management. Now, I, I know the problems around time management aren't always simple. Uh, I'm sure there's all kinds of potential circumstances at play behind things. And so I've got sympathy for what's happening. And sympathy, even as we reflect that most people aren't taught how to manage their time. It's, at least to my knowledge, it's hardly in any schools as something that is taught. Um, perhaps no one was around at home or had the experience to go through it with you or to model it. And so it's complicated, but it does seem that this simply isn't taught. And that's part of what we want to help with here. Our aim is to try and help you over this episode and the next one and the next one uh, to help you see how you can manage your time better. And I am as certain as I can be that uh, if you 
use this or something similar to this, you'll get better marks. You'll be less stressed from circumstances that you should be able to control. Although I know there's lots of circumstances that we can't control. You'll be better able to pursue the things that matter most to you. Doesn't that sound nice? And you'll actually be able to have proper rest each, each week with much of the weekend off and at least seven to eight hours um, sleep each night. And so we're doing this um, because we want your university experience to be better or as enjoyable as possible. And something important like this, even if it seems very simple, like time management, it can help you. Again, there's this need. Now, the good news is that while time management is a skill, it's one that can be learned. That is good news. Uh, it can be learned and it can be a useful tool for all of your life. But it's best to learn it now, if you haven't already, um, before life becomes more complicated. Because even, even stop and ask yourself a few questions. Whose time do you need to manage while you are at university? Now, of course, again, there are exceptions, but largely you just have to manage your own time, right? But think further on, uh, whose time will you need to help manage if, for instance, you got married and had kids? Well, now it's moved from being not only your time, but your spouses and your kids. Or, or what if you ended up in an oversight role um, where you were looking after other people, managing other people in some capacity? Well, now you've got to manage the time of yourself and then who knows, maybe tens or hundreds or, or thousands of other people. And so, you know, it's worth saying that time management only gets more difficult as more people and more responsibilities come into the picture. And if you can't manage your time now, uh, you will only struggle more in the future if more people and more responsibilities uh, enter into the equation. When it comes to time management, there are, there are countless tools and ways of doing things. And in the next two episodes, we'll look at some of those. But when we get there, just take things and make it your own. Uh, adapt it according to your personality, your particular needs. Your needs will change as you, as you go along, I'm sure. Uh, the point is that there's flexibility around the principles and the skills. This is a very general thing that we're looking at over here. All that we're after is a format that allows you to plan and to track your time and your activities and your goals, and to be able to action some of that in a very helpful and manageable way. Right, let's um, end this first introduction episode by looking at our second major point, and that is the principle of time management. I'm going to show you something on screen uh, very soon. Before I do, listen to these instructions. This is a speed quiz. Okay, it's a speed quiz. I'm going to give you one minute, um, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to try and find the numbers on screen from 1 through to 88. Okay, so from 1 through to 88. But you're only allowed to go up one number at a time, and it must be in order. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, six, etc., etc. Hopefully that makes sense. Are you ready? It's going to come up on screen, and when it does, I'm going to give you one minute. And your time starts now. Twenty seconds to go. Okay, and stop. 
Uh, I wonder how many you got, what the highest number is that you got up to in that time. Now, we're, um, we're going to do it one more time, but we're going to do it with one slight change. Um, the page is going to be divided into, into four parts. In other words, that single A4 is going to now have four quadrants to it. Um, you ready to do it again? I'll give you another minute and your time starts now. Twenty seconds to go. Okay, and stop. I wonder how far you got um, that time with that minute. For some of you, if this worked the way it was meant to work, for some of you, there would have been a significant change. Uh, and, and not all of you, but some of you would have realized pretty soon that something helped to result in that change. Not just doing it for the second time, um, but something more. And it's this, in case you didn't get it. There was a pattern at play. Instead of finding a number somewhere on an entire sheet, A4 sheet of paper, uh, you might have realized that actually you only needed to look in one of the quadrants at a time. You can, you can see it now if you, if you didn't. Um, and so that would have meant that when you found the first number, the next number would be in the next quadrant. And you're only looking at a, at a quarter of the page instead of the whole page. And then you move on to the next quadrant and you find the next one there. And what that's meant to do is it's meant to illustrate a principle. And it's a, it's a fairly major principle of time management. And it's this. Patterns and systems improve efficiency, drawing less energy to get more done. You would have experienced that with just that very simple thing. The time was exactly the same, one minute. But hopefully in the second one, if you worked out the pattern and the system, you would have gotten more done. You would have got higher numbers that you would have found within that one minute. And so that was meant to be true in the exercise we just did. Um, if we had recognized it, then we would have gotten more. Um, and we would have used less energy as well, less energy and more done. So when we get to the last episode and look at the tools of time management, that's the basic principle behind things. We're setting up patterns and systems that improve efficiency and will use less energy to get more done, hopefully consistently. So this is the basic principle of time management. Patterns and systems improve efficiency, drawing less energy to get more done. Simple, right? And what that looks like in practice, we'll come to that um, very soon. But that's it for this first episode. We'll see you for the next one later. Bye.